Hello everyone, welcome in my online course Microservices on Kubernetes. In this course I'm going to show you how to develop, deploy and test JVM microservices on Kubernetes. We will discuss interesting tools, frameworks and platforms that may help you in simplifying the process. The concept around this course is pretty different than for my previous course Microservices with Spring Boot and Spring Cloud. Since we are going to discuss many aspects related to the development of such applications, I just want to give you a big picture of each described solutions without diving into the details. It is something you must do by yourself if you would be interested in using each of them. That's why every part of my course will be around 5 minutes long. In the first part I'm going to show you how to set up your local development environment. If you are familiar with JVM development, you probably use one of three popular IDE tools. IntelliJ, NetBeans or Eclipse. My course is based on IntelliJ. Let's start from useful plugin from Google Cloud. Its name is CloudCode. If you prefer graphical tools over command line usage, CloudCode is something for you. With CloudCode plugin, you may easily deploy and run your application on Kubernetes just by clicking the same button as you would be running your application locally. You just need to choose between development mode and a single deploy mode. Cloud Code is integrating with other popular tool from Google, Scaffold. Scaffold is a command line tool for deployment automation, but with Cloud Code it is completely transparent for you. The next useful feature of uh, Cloud Code is an ability to edit YAML files with code completion. You see that we may edit an existing files and add some new properties to the YAML file. You may, you may also use predefined templates for creating new manifests. There are available templates for the most popular Kubernetes objects like service, config map or deployment. In that case, I'm creating a new manifest with service definition. And as you see, I just need to change a generated name and a service type. Cloud Code also supports code completion for scaffold manifests, so we may use it uh, for scaffold configuration. We'll discuss scaffold in the next part of our tutorial. The next useful feature uh, of Cloud Code is an ability to visualize the status of our Kubernetes cluster. We may easily switch between multiple contexts there and take a look on the details by expanding a tree. For example, I may see a list of workloads, deployments, services. You may click on a particular object and execute some additional commands like that for pod log streaming. What is important, Cloud Code is available for free on IntelliJ Community Edition and opposite to the JetBrains Kubernetes plugin, which may currently be used only with Ultimate Edition. Of course, you may also use Cli to interact with Kubernetes plugin. I really like IntelliJ Terminal View. We may use their multiple bookmarks with independent terminal instances. Because we will switch between different contexts, it is worth to install a kubectx tool that simplifies switching between them. We may use kubectx OS tool command for displaying all available contexts. As you see, the currently selected context is Pyomin cube. We may change it by executing kubectx set command with a new context name docker desktop. Finally, let's verify that it has been changed. In case if you are looking for a more convenient graphical tool that allows you to manage Kubernetes cluster, you may be interested in Octant. It is definitely more advanced tool than a standard Kubernetes dashboard. A second difference is that uh, it is installed locally on your machine and may be used for managing multiple contexts. 
If you don't want to use currently set contacts, user should start Octant with context parameter and pass there the name of chosen contract. And I did that. I set the Pyomin cube context. Here we see the dashboard of Octant. We may see a list of deployments with a number of pods. Uh, we may switch to the view with pods, secrets or deployment. We may do really many things. For example, we may easily delete an existing pod after going into the details of every pod. So we may also take a look on the cluster overview and see the list of namespaces, list of nodes. So uh, it is really more advanced than a standard Kubernetes dashboard. I have demonstrated different tools that allows you to manage your Kubernetes cluster locally. You can do it with IntelliJ plugin, still with command line and with external tool that provides simple web UI. That's all in the first part of my course. In the next part, I will show you how to set up Kubernetes cluster locally on your machine and remotely on the cloud provider sites.